Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, brothers and sisters, we celebrate uh, two great feasts, uh, two, two commemorations uh, in the church. Uh, today, we honor the Holy Fathers of the Ecumenical Councils who uphold the uh, doctrine of the church uh, throughout our recorded history. <coughs> today, we also honor the Venerable Seraphim Misra, the, the, the greatest uh, saint uh, of Russia, uh, who holds a special place for uh, many within the church. Uh, the Holy Fathers were called together at various times uh, throughout the first millennium of the Church in order to square away the doctrines of the Church. And through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, uh, they uh, came together and proclaimed uh, what the Church already held and always held true to be true about uh, the different revelations of God. Um, and what I'd like to point out to you about these ecumenical councils and why we honor these Fathers so much is because it took a great deal of, uh, of strength, of humility, uh, but also perseverance in order to uphold these. Oftentimes, uh, various teachings came up in the church uh, that were from within the church, and that the majority of the church were believing. And we had to straighten these things out. And it was only through the Holy Fathers and their uh, um, connection to the, the Divine Spirit where we were able to come to a complete knowledge uh, of these uh, truths. What is sad about this is that oftentimes the people who proclaim these so-called heresies that the Church uh, rightly denounced were oftentimes bishops and priests and pious laymen. They were wrong in their way of thinking about God. In fact, when you read about uh, all the councils, I think about at least uh, uh, four out of six or seven of them that now it's a certain patriarch, a patriarch, that was wrong in their beliefs. And so we often have to reflect in our own way, in our own lives, about the teachings of the church and, and understand, do we, are, can we fall prey? I mean, if bishops and patriarchs and theologians all fell prey to believing wrong, what makes us any different? In fact, the word heresy, it means to choose. It means to choose. People choose to be something different. It's a choice. It's a choice, and that's what heresy means. And so in our lives, we have to be able to uh, think, are we choosing the Christian path? I know so many, we maybe we're not theologically or intellectually understand the theology of the church. I know, it gets deep. Uh, some of it makes no sense in my head, to be honest with you sometimes, because I have a limited uh, rational thinking. But there's other things in the church, uh, like the uh, sacraments, the services, and the hymnography, and the commandments, and those things that Christ has asked us to live in our lives. We tend to choose. We tend to choose. We make a choice that I like that teaching, and I'm holding firm to it. There's other things that the church and scripture have asked of me. I don't see that working and so good for me. I don't like it. So I'm going to choose. I make a choice. You make a choice every day. Am I going to fulfill it? Or am I going to choose another direction? And so we don't have to be great heretics to be a heretic. We're all heretics. We all choose. We all make a choice on how to live. To how to live our life as Christians in this world. And the church has laid out for it to us. Christ, the holy divine scriptures, have laid out for us on how we should live our lives in this world with humility, with perseverance, with love, with commitment to God. These things, brothers and sisters, are what are asked of us to flee from the occasions of sins. Or do we say, that's a lot of work. Sometimes that's going to get in the way of my fun. And we choose, we make a choice, and we become a heretic. So let us not just think of heresy as theology, as some wrong teaching. Heresy on the basic level is just to choose something counter to God, counter to what He wants. And so we are all heretics. We're all full of heresy in the way we live our lives because we choose to live counter to God's command of us. Today we also honor Venerable Seraphim. Seraphim gives us a kind of a good roadmap on how to live our lives without having to become these heretics. 
He was a great ascetic. He was a priest monk. But then, in, towards the end of his life, he also lived a life of a hermit. He would live out in, uh, on a rock for a time. He just lived on a rock, praying to God. He would go in and go to the, to the, uh, to the monastery on Sunday for the feast days to receive communion. Then he'd go back into the woods and he would pray. The, the animals, we have pictures and icons of them that show how the animals would even, he was so at peace that he'd come and the bears would come and feed from him. I say bears, large bears. And so, but Sarah, Father Seraphim was also a, uh, uh, a holy uh, spiritual elder. People sought him out for advice and guidance in life. Okay? And he was always a big proponent of obedience to the spiritual father. But Father Seraphim, St. Seraphim, was very wise. He always preached the royal path, the middle road. He would never lay upon somebody a higher and more uh, heavy burden that they could that they could carry, they couldn't carry. He wouldn't put that yoke on their neck. Yet he would not let them slip down and, and just live like there's no God, like there's no end to this room that we have to be uh, accountable on Judgment Day. He asked people to always lead the royal path. He'd also give, and for this, he, an example of this is he would give short prayer rules for people. He didn't ask them to do large prayer rules, but these akathis and, and uh, large morning evening prayers and stuff at home. He gave them a short, simple, easily memorized prayer rule. This is their prayer rule. He always tried to keep the metal path, not reaching for the stars of asceticism, even though he himself was just a bit, that's what he did. But he would not let people uh, uh, debase themselves in this world either. He encouraged them to live the middle path, the middle road to God. And this, brothers and sisters, is how we stop from being heretics. We don't obey, uh, uh, exalt ourselves with high, with high, such high uh, um, standards that we think we are something. Because then, too, we become heretics in the intellectual sense. And we don't let ourselves fall so far that we become worldly, but we choose just to not live like God. We take the real path, the middle road to salvation. Always working hard, but not overdoing it where we come into despondency and despair. Father Seraphim always encouraged his spiritual children. He said, if we only knew what joy is the grave waiting for us in the kingdom of heaven, that we would endure any suffering, slanders, misgivings in this world. In fact, he himself did. He was beat by thieves. Beat by thieves in his little hut in the woods. And he's crippled now. You see that in the, uh, his icons from that point on, he's, he couldn't stand straight anymore. He's hunched over for the rest of his life. And he never ever wanted to, uh, to, to get revenge on these people, on these men. He wouldn't even tell who they were. This is the kind of meekness and humility that Father Seraphim lived his life. And so if we do the same, we live our life with humility, but also in a commitment to God, we too can enter into that big, great joy in heaven that he speaks of, with all the blessings that come with it. But let us choose one thing, one thing only, is to live our life with God, and for him, and only him. Let us honor St. Seraphim with a, with a, a, a small 